Hey guys, this is Imperfect Faith, and um, today um, I thought that we'd look into Cinema 4D, and um, a lot of people have sent me messages and asked me about um, the intro that I've been using uh, on my channel, on my YouTube channel, and um, so I thought I'd go through and kind of explain um, how I did that, and um, talk about how to use one object to attract another object to it. Um, there is a lot of possibilities for uh, for this. Um, you know, just use your imagination and get as creative as you can. Um, you can do a lot of things with it. It's a pretty cool effect. Um, so I created a little uh, video here to kind of um, give an example of um, using attraction between two objects. So let's just uh, take a look at it real quick. So in this example, um, there's actually a couple different spots of attraction going on. Um, there's a small attraction going on with this first sphere, then leading up to the second sphere. Um, then the attraction stops and the third sphere takes over drawing uh, the smaller objects to it so um, you know you can you can get as complex as you want and get as creative as you want or you can be as simple as you want um, it's really up to you so it's a it's a cool effect so let's um, open up cinema 4d and kind of set up a scene and um, see what we can make today. So let's set up uh, an object. Let's use a sphere. Um, let's also put a floor into the scene. Let's again, let's lift the sphere up so it's kind of resting right on that floor. And let's put a light into the scene. It's always good to be able to see what you're looking at. Um, let's go ahead and uh, let's pick some let's pick some cool colors to put in here today. Um, you, you can go. You can either make your own material. Um, double click on it. You can choose from color, diffusion, luminance, transparency, reflection. You can put a bump uh, mat into it, and you can even displace the the sphere. Um, using a bump mat, um, using noise, um, but that's uh, that'll be for another tutorial. So let's not do that today. Let's take the easy route. Let's use a material preset. Let's go into MoGraph, go into materials, go into rainbow cubes. I like those. I also like to add a little reflection to it. Um, just makes it look good. About 20%. Get that out of there. Put that on the cube. And um, let's let's make the floor. Let's see here. Let's make the floor. Let's try this construction sign. All right. Um, reflections at five percent. Let's up that to about twenty percent. Get out of there and drag that onto the floor. And in our light, we can't forget to, uh, we're using an Omni light. Let's go ahead and uh, use sh a shadow map, a soft shadow map for that. And let's take a quick render look just to uh, see how that looks. And I don't know about checkers and stripes. I think I was told never to wear checkers and stripes together. But, uh, but I think it looks cool for this so let's go ahead and use it um, alright so let's get this let's twirl this around to get it where we can actually see it a little bit better move it down a little bit um, the first thing that we're going to want to do is grab this floor right click on it go to MoGraph tags and make it a rigid body and do the same thing with the sphere um, let's go ahead and lift this sphere up go out a little bit get this up okay 
um, that's the main sphere that we're going to use to attract some smaller objects to. So let's go ahead and make some smaller objects. Let's make another sphere. Let's decrease the size of the sphere quite a bit. Let's zoom in and s make sure that we're sitting on the floor here. And let's move this down to we're right on the floor there. Okay. And we'll zoom out. We'll move this down. And okay, so we want to make more than just one object uh, that's sitting on the floor. So a really quick and uh, great way to do this is to go into MoGraph, grab um, Cloner Object, and bring that in. And then what you want to do is you want to take this small sphere, and you want to hold down your left mouse button on it, move it up until the arrow points down over Cloner Object, and then release. And uh, you're going to see now that that made three objects. Well, what, what we want to do is we want to hit cloner object. We, we want this to kind of lay flat on the floor. So we're going to go into um, object under mode. We're going to go into grid array, which is going to put that into uh, a grid pattern. And then we're going to go into count under object. And um, we're going to go to the middle one and put one. We only want one in that space. But maybe we want more that go up and down and left and right. So let's do seven. Seven's a good number. Seven's a godly number. Let's use that. And um, they're pretty closely uh, bound together here. We kind of want to spread those apart. So let's go ahead and increase the size on both of those until we... Hold on here until we get those spread apart. There we go. And then we again want to take a look at this and lift this up so it is setting on the floor. Okay? We want to take that cloner object. Let's take a look at it first. Okay. We want to take that cloner object and uh, let's put a let's put a color on it. Let's make them black. Let's make a new material. A little click on there. Make that black. Hit reflection. Let's add about 25% to that. And uh, bring that out and put that on the corner object so that now, as we look at them, they are shiny black spheres. Okay? So then we want to zoom out a little bit, move this down so we know what we're looking at. And then what we want to do. Um, oh, before I go any further, um, if you wanted to randomize these balls a little bit so they're not lined up in such a perfect order, you'd go under MoGraph, you grab Random Effector, click that, boom, and it's going to change the way the balls are. And you can actually go into Random Effector and uh, uh, change the left to the right. We don't want Y because that's going to move them up, so we want to zero that out. But if we we can move them up and down apart from each other. We can move them left and right. Kind of make it look like it's a little bit more random. Um, but we are not going to do that today. But I just want to know, let you know if that was available. Um, then, the, then the next thing we're going to do is uh, go up here uh, and click on gravity. What we want to do is go in, because we want we want gravity to affect these balls, but we want it to affect it inversely. We want them to go up. So we're going to click on gravity, go under object, and click negative 4. Okay, so we got that set up, but we need, we need something to pull these balls up. Because if you see, if you just press the timeline down here, nothing's really happening yet. So what we want to do is go up here again and we want to click on the attractor. We want to click this attractor and pull this up so it's around our sphere, our large sphere that we want to attract it to. And right now probably nothing much is going to happen either because if you click on attractor and you come down here you see the strength is only at 10. But if we change that 
that's probably a little much, but if we change that and click on the timeline, oop, you also have to put a MoGraph tag on the cloner object as well. Sorry about that. So now as we click the play button, we're going to see that those balls are going to go up real quick. That's a little too quick. So we just need to decrease the, uh, the strength of the attractor. Maybe take one of those zeros off of there. And click the timeline again. There we go. Now they're going to come up a little bit slower. And if we hit render view, this down a little bit. Okay. And then if we hit render view, we're going to see that those balls have actually come in, came off the ground, were attracted to the larger sphere at the top, and are moving around it. And if we look at the timeline again, boom. And let's say we want those balls to go up, but then we want them to fall back off. So basically we just need to go to about 45 frames, go into the attractor, control click on the strength, in the little circle next to the strength, move forward one frame, zero this out, control click again, and then what will happen, we'll have the ball, we'll have the smaller spheres attracted to the larger object, and then they just fall off and kind of bounce on the floor. So that is kind of a cool um, effect that you could, uh, I'm sure, use in a lot of different situations. Um, and get as creative with it as you want and it's really pretty simple as well um, but it can be powerful if, if used uh, in the correct way so um, that is it that is that's pretty simple um, the other thing I wanted to talk about while I have a, a minute here is that um, a lot of people say well that's great but how do I render this out well I'm going to tell you really quickly how to do just a basic render there's a this rendering can get pretty complex What's cool about Cinema 4D is you can actually render out an After Effects project file that you can directly upload into uh, open up an After Effects. Um, and maybe I'll do a tutorial on that later, but right now we're just going to do the basic render. So you're going to go up here into Render, go into Render Settings, go into Output, and this is where you pick what size your screen is going to be, what size your file is going to be. So when I usually go under Film Video. Um, and because I usually bring it into After Effects, I want it to have as many frames as possible because I might slow it down and I don't want it to be choppy. So I usually do HDTV 1080, 29.97. Uh, switch that to all frames so it goes from 0 to 90. When you save it, you pick your location, name it, save it. And then I usually switch to, you can choose between any of these formats. I usually do a QuickTime movie. Then, this is important too, when you go into anti-aliasing, you want to go under best. That will give you the best image. Then options. So you're pretty much done for the, with the basic render. Then all you do is come up here and click on this orange render. It's not going to do it because I didn't specify a save spot, but and then it will render it out frame by frame um, but that that's just a basic render along with the uh, the attractor effect and um, hope you guys enjoyed that and I hope you guys can use that and um, thank you guys for uh, watching and God bless you all